first, I want to bring Martin Bach in from KVE Composites to hear about their perspective and to hear what they think about induction welding. Hello, Martin. Hello. Good to have you on the show. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you all. Hello. Can you briefly tell us a bit more about your organization and vision? Yes, of course. Well, uh, KV is also a company based in the Netherlands. We are on the west side of the Netherlands, uh, and we are a relatively small design and build company, uh, focusing both on thermostat and thermoplastic applications. Um, and for the thermoplastics, we have been working on uh, the induction welding technology over uh, already 20 years. I was just reviewing that one of the first projects we started together with the Boeing company in 2001. Uh, and we've come a long way. So the induction welding technology you see at the TPRC, it's actually the setup which has been developed by KVE, um, where one of the things is that we have technology patented uh, because the complexity is indeed that you have to get the uh, heat exactly at the center uh, of, of the joining of the two materials. And we use a heat sink material on the top which is transparent for the magnetic field, and that cools the top surface, and that allows us to generate the heat exactly at the interface. So this technology has been developed over the years, and um, the, the, there were some projects where we were so, uh, let's say, successful, and in the end, to, to display this technology that it was mm -hmm. in 2007 uh, seen by Fokker Aerostructures, and they have use this technology together with us to make a demonstrator and after this, develop this into flying applications. Uh, yeah. So the technology is at this moment qualified in flying on, on business jets, so on the Gulfstream G650, where it is uh, placed on the uh, rudders and elevators of the aircraft, and uh, also on an aircraft of Dassault. Okay. Uh, so F6X. Mm -hmm. So this is for us really some of the exciting uh, things that, that I know that there are aircraft flying around using our technology. Nice. That must 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 be a great feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I work now one year for KV, so I wasn't part of that team, but still I'm proud, uh, proud to, be, uh, to be part of that uh, company. And at this moment, you, you, one of the, your other questions was where, where are we where looking into the applications? are using fabric material. And uh, the uh, Yannick also indicated uh, what he just showed, it was a fabric material. And with fabrics, it is relatively easy to generate eddy currents within one ply. But the trend in the aerospace is going into unidirectional material. And uh, this allows for quicker automation of the, of the processes. And uh, so this is seen as, let's say, the next phase of, of aircraft uh, manufacturing. But with UDs, you have pl uh, the ply, all the fibers are in one direction. So there, it's more difficult to generate eddy current inside one ply. So that only happens when there is, let's say, an interface with an ply which is under another angle. Mm -hmm. And that makes it much more complicated. So we, at this moment, are looking into developing the technology so in, 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 to, to the level that it can also be applied using UD materials. And that's also where Yannick currently is focusing on. Nice. So um, looking into the heat of mechanisms with UD materials. Great. Well, while you were telling this, I saw my gentleman, uh, my gentleman, the gentleman here in the studio nodding. Do you feel this, uh, this the same, uh, the same as, as as Martin is sharing the, the the whole development where it's going to with the UD, Eric? Yes, definitely. We see that automation of uh, processes. Uh, it's uh, it, it's a trend, and it's becoming much more uh, important nowadays. So this this involves unidirectional material, and as Martin says, uh, it's a challenge to combine this with uh, induction welding. Yeah, well, how valuable is the TPRC's research for you, Martin? <laughs> Well, I, th I think that's, that's, that's a very good question um, because we, we are a small company, so we have developed this, this, this technology in-house, um, but we are a small team and we also have our, let's say, commercial applications. But the research being done at the TPRC, it's on a much more fundamental level to really understand how does this material heat up and uh, to really look at, 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 the, at the basics of that and really dive deep and that supports us to better understand how this technology can be can be applied. So, so for us, it's it's really essential to have a partner like TPRC um, to, to support us. 
and uh, yeah, so so we also really cooperate with uh, with with, with Janik on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, how does TPRC contribute to your business then? Well, in, in such a way that uh, we believe that the, the, the next generation of aircraft will be using UD materials. Um, so we look into uh, applying our induction welding technology to the market. But for us to, to develop that technology to be able to, to stable uh, produce uh, the same kind of quality parts, we need to understand the small changes in the material, the effect of this, and, and that's the kind of research which has been being done at TPRC. So that, that's really the fundamentals for us to build towards uh, commercial applications. Yeah, and you already talked a bit on this topic uh, in your first answer, but how did, you, how did you get into induction welding? As a company? Yeah. Um, well, that's actually a good question. So KVE started with uh, two uh, founders, and uh, one of the founders, he currently works at uh, Torre, Advanced Composites. Um, but it was a, there was kind of a thermoplastics team and a thermoset team and a kind of, a, a, let's say, product development team. And the thermoplastics team, they have done some step forming, uh, but then the idea came across like, wouldn't it be nice if we can weld uh, uh, the parts together to make an, a welded assembly without rivets, without fasteners? This will be a tremendous improvement, which is only possible with thermoplastics. So in that brainstorm, they found out that induction welding as a technology that seems the most promising uh, because you, you are basically, you are not in direct contact with the material, but you use, let's say, a contactless method, uh, and you can really direct the energy to, towards the towards the interface. So, so that's how that that development got started, and and then there there were a lot of research uh, projects uh, established. So, so that's why I think it really took us around seven years to get the technology uh, towards, uh, let's say, the first large demonstrators. Um, but we believed in it, and we kept on continuing. And I think also uh, last year there was the, uh, the anniversary of 10 years of TPRC. So the last 10 years there's been a massive improvement on uh, on, on, on thermoplastic. So now I think uh, we really see a, a, a growing uh, maturity of the technology, and this, this allows us to uh, yeah to, to move to, to to more flying applications. And uh, so I think we we've just been uh, relatively uh, uh, an early adapter of the technology. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time and sharing yeah. this experience yeah. uh, with us. Thank you so much, too. It's great. Well, um, let's talk to, uh, to other partners to hear their perspective on induction welding. First one is uh, Andy Meyer. She's the Engineering Manager, Advanced Research and Technology of Spirit Aerosystems. Hello, Andy. Welcome. Nice to have you on the show. Hello. Thanks Hi. for having me. Um, Andy, um, Spirit is a supplier to Boeing, and they're now exploring. You're now exploring welding and finding out it's not as easy as it always seemed. Um, you're relatively new to the field of thermoplastic composites. What's your take on welding? Well, we're not exactly new to thermoplastic composites. Having worked on it, Spirit worked on it in the '90s as as okay. Boeing. But there's there's certainly a resurgence. We've had our ebbs and flows. And in the past uh, uh, 10 years or less, you know, uh, supported by TPRC, there's there's been quite a resurgence in our internal R&D efforts. Um, and that's primarily, as you mentioned, we, we do supply to Boeing. The single aisle aircraft is critical to our business. And so the high rates that are needed that we anticipate uh, with the next composite single aisle aircraft um, is not necessarily compatible with thermosetting composites that we are experts in. And so uh, for the future high-rate manufacturing methods that we anticipate, we need to be leaders in thermoplastic composites. Mm -hmm. And so welding, how that relates to welding, we think welding is, is really key to realizing that high-rate manufacturing um, uh, especially induction welding, as Wouter was describing, the high rate achievable there. Um, and since those, and to apply welding, which is where uh, the spirit makes large structural assemblies. Uh, we, we've, we've made small stamp form parts in the past, but our business is really in these larger assemblies mm -hmm. where welding is going to be key. 
since the material costs are rather high for thermoplastic composite steel, we'll have to realize some of the cost savings through the consolidation of manufacturing steps. And so our strategy with thermoplastic welding is to reduce the number of manufacturing steps, uh, design for thermoplastic composites so that we're reducing steps and, and, and maximizing the, the uh, structural strength of these parts and also to automate the processes. Mm -hmm. Erik, can you relate to the strategy that Spirit, uses, that Spirit is going on? Yes, definitely. I think welding is one of the uh, uh, technologies that really fits here because we want to go for large integrated structures, mm -hmm. we want to go for weight saving, uh, and this is typically uh, yeah, the process which can help there. Yeah, great. Uh, Andy, you mentioned you're working on induction welding. Do you also um, explore the other welding techniques? Certainly, yeah. Induction welding is one of the primary methods that we are pursuing with our R&T group. Uh, resistance welding is another one <clears throat> that we've described as well. And uh, conduction welding is, is another one. I don't think we talked as much about that on the show prior. True. Um, one of the methods that we use at Spirit is uh, called cofusion, and it's, it's a little different from the others. It is a type of conduction welding. Uh, but it utilizes a heated tool and um, heats a uh, skin, for example, so like a skin stringer assembly, it would heat through the skin side surface up to, up to the fine surface of the stiffener that's attached and no further. And we utilize strategic insulation to keep upstanding stiffeners on that skin from, uh, from deconsolidating from reaching temperature. So our goal, similar to induction welding and and getting the energy exactly where we need it is to bring uh, through the skin and up to a faint surface to melt temperature, apply the pressure uh, using an autoclave or tooling. And in our case, Spirit has many autoclaves. Um, and while we want to pursue out of autoclave methods, because we don't want to use high temperature, the high temperature is required for thermoplastic composites. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty challenging for an autoclave. But considering we already have a lot of relatively low temperature autoclaves, we're able to utilize that um, a cold autoclave, so to speak, to do this type of consolidation uh, with just conduction welding. So that's a little bit different than some of the other methods that were described. Yeah, well, thanks very much for pointing out these as well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for this contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, and we're honored to welcome another guest to the show. We will talk to Francis Semelot, Associate Technical Fellow of Boeing Research and Technology. Welcome, Francis. Hi. Thank you for having me. Hi. Live in the USA. <laughs> yes. Great. <laughs> Actually in Puerto Rico, but also part of the USA. <laughs> uh, true. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> Boeing invests a lot in research done at the TPRC. Why do you believe in TPCs for aerospace? Yes, thermoplastic composites, as it has been mentioned in previous shows and in this show, they offer a lot of advantages in terms of reducing weight and cost because they're better suited for automation and having fast processes in, in implementation of them. And why is welding so important? Welding is so important because it's uniquely suited for this type of material. So uh, the, the, the three elements have been mentioned, right? The pressure, the temperature, and time. Uh, for thermoplastic composites, they once you apply this temperature, they can be reheated and reformed. And then once they're cool, they, they'll still be able to be used. So induction welding is a process that can bring in that heat in a localized way and take advantage of the material mm -hmm. property to be reheated and reformed. And, uh, it also lends yeah. itself to automation, um, so it keeps building up on the advantage of thermoplastic composites. And so what applications are you thinking of in the long term? There are different applications that is suited for their edges, um, skin stiff and structures. And I think as the, the industry grows and there's a better understanding of it, also the application space will grow. 
Okay. And uh, what are the benefits of welding for the certification process? The certification process will take some time. I, I think, as it was mentioned, there's still some black box element of it. So. I think there needs to be a better understanding of the process to really certify how it should be, which is a unitized structure. I think meanwhile, relying on, on certification approaches that are understood and similar to other technologies are would be the approach taken. And then as the confidence grow, as we have a fundamental understanding of the process, then the certification will approach more as it, uh, as it should be, as a unitized structure in itself. Yes, so that will become a next step. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But first we need to reduce risk and have confidence in what we're doing, so then we approach it um, like things that we already know to, how to certify. So right. in the beginning it might look more like an adhesive joint, but that is not the final step. We just need a starting point. Thanks. And you have been to the TPRC regularly. Um, how do you like working here at the TPRC? It's great, yeah. I think there is nothing like being there hands-on, being part of the research as it's being developed. There's a saying, a picture is worth a thousand uh, words. I think hands-on is worth a thousand pictures. So uh, working with an excellent team of researchers and you get an understanding of the same language. And I'm, t I'm not talking Dutch versus English, but the same technical language because you face those same problems together. And then they can bring their fundamental understanding to the table, whereas uh, partners like Boeing can bring that um, industry perspective to uh, be part of the solution. Great. Well, thank you very much for sharing this story with us. Thank you. And goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>